Hello, hello, hello. Today for me is Thursday, April 13th, 2023. However, I'm not planning to post the solutions today. Probably, maybe my guess is maybe three days from now. So these are the solutions to problem 168. No solutions of any of my viewers I found worse showing you as the solutions. I'm not saying that some of the solutions were not correct. Some were, not too many, but some were correct. But I still prefer my own solutions. So question A, the length of the submerged portion of the rod is three meters. That's its equilibrium depth. So when the rod floats vertically, three meter is below the level of the surface. We call that, therefore, its equilibrium depth. The cross-sectional area of the rod is a square meters, and rho is the density of water. Anywhere outside the water, the atmospheric pressure is P0. In equilibrium, the weight of the rod which of course is mg, it's a force, will be equal to the weight of the water displaced by it, called Archimedes' principle, which can very easily be derived, by the way. So the buoyant force, due to Archimedes, if you want to give him credit, is an upwards force. At equilibrium, hands off, the rod is just floating. The weight of the rod, mg, equals rho times g times la. Now we displace the rod over a distance x. I will displace it downwards. That is my plus x direction. So we, dis we displace the rod over a distance down x-words from equilibrium and then we let it go. The force equation is then this. Look at this very carefully because this is at the heart of the problem. In this equation P0 plus rho g times L plus x is the pressure at the bottom of the rod. P0 plus rho g L plus x is the pressure at the bottom of the rod. Look at this. Here is the rod push down over a distance x. So the amount that is in the water is now L plus x. Anywhere outside the water, the pressure is P0. However, at the bottom of the rod, the pressure is now P0, plus L plus X times rho G, because it is now in the water not only over a distance L, but over a distance L plus X. So you can see now that P0 plus L plus X times rho G is now the pressure at the bottom of the rod. If now we go to forces, Outside 
the water, the pressure is everywhere P0. So the force down on the top of the rod is P0 times A. The force at the center of the rod is Mg. That goes without saying. So now the force upwards at the bottom of the rod is the pressure times A. And that's what you see here. So this picture is really at the, at the heart of the problem. And we know that this mg will always be rho gla because that was the equilibrium situation and that will not change of course. So mg is always rho gla and we sub substitute in this equation now that mg is rho gla. And when we do that, we find this result, mx double dot, that's the acceleration of course, in the vertical direction, is now minus rho g ax. If we now use the equivalent expression, namely that rho g a is mg divided by L, that's always true, then the whole situation collapses into this simple result. x double dot equals minus x times g divided by L. A beautiful, simple equation, and the solution is a simple harmonic oscillation. And the period of that simple harmonic oscillation is 2 pi times the square root of L over G. We know what L is. I have taken for G 9.81 and so the period is very close to 3.47 seconds. Rho zero is then the square root of G over L. Now comes the question, if we change the barometric pressure, or if the barometric pressure changed by 5%, would that change this period? Notice that the result that we have here is independent of the atmospheric pressure P0. It's nowhere here. That is rather obvious, because let P0 become 1.05 times P0, then the pressure at the bottom of the rod would increase from P0 to 1.05 P0. But the pressure at the bottom of the rod would go up by the same amount. So now, 1.05 P0 plus rho GLA is now the pressure at the bottom of the rod. So, it's clear that therefore any change in the, the barometric pressure will not change the period T. Nice problem. I have not shown the solution of any of my viewers. That doesn't mean that all their solutions were wrong, not at all. Several were correct. But I still preferred my own solution. Okay? Study this carefully, because many of you have a misconception about pressure, in this case, and about forces in this case. I'd like to add something to the solutions of problem 168. 
And I want you to forget about Archimedes' principle completely. Here is the water level. When you go down in the water, you experience always the outside pressure of the water, we call that one atmosphere, plus the hydrostatic pressure. Do your homework on what the hydrostatic pressure is. If you are below this surface by a distance L plus X, then the hydrostatic pressure due to this column is L plus X times rho G. I never have used the word Archimedes. But of course on the surface itself of the water is also that value P0. That means the pressure at this level here is the sum of that pressure plus the pressure due to hydrostatic column. That may make you see very easily that at the top of the rod, the pressure must be P0. And under natural circumstances, that is very close to one atmosphere, of course. But at the bottom here, it is higher by this amount because of the hydrostatic pressure. Since L is roughly three meters, a little more, but forget that for now, the P0 here is way larger than L rho G. P0 is one atmosphere. Three meters of water is roughly only one third of an atmosphere. Ten meters of water is one atmosphere. So, I hope that this will give you a better insight in this picture. Once you get the pressure here to be P0 and the pressure here to be P0 plus the hydrostatic pressure, then you can flip over to here, multiply them by A and you get forces. Alright, I hope this was useful. I never used the word Archimedes here. I hope you remember that.